uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, hope you're enjoying the the conference so far. Uh, first couple of sessions uh, starting now. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, here today, uh, we're going to talk about planning for CRAP and entity revisions in core, and we're going to explain a little bit what this is. But more importantly, we're going to focus on the planning part here today. Um, a bit more on the agenda. So as I just said, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what and why we're interested in these things. We're going to talk about the status of some modules in Contrib that are re relevant to the solution. We're going to talk about a use case for this in core that perhaps could help drive um, this feature, the planning aspect of it as well, and then hopefully at the end we can have a little bit of a discussion and Q&A. Um, I really would like to leave some room for the discussion part at the end. I think that's important, especially this being a core conversation track. So at the end, please feel free to step up to the mic in the middle and uh, ask your questions or throw tomatoes. <laughs> okay, so first, uh, who are we here on stage? My name is Dick Olson. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm a long-time contributor uh, in both Core and Contrib. I'm maintaining the UUID module and Deploy, and uh, w currently working for Pfizer. And uh, I'm Tim Millwood. Um, I work for AppNovation, and I'm one of the, the core maintainers for the statistics module. So, what and why? What are we talking about here today? A brief background. So, CRAP uh, is an acronym and it stands for Create, Read, Archive, and Purge, as opposed to what many people are used to called CRUD, Create, Read, Update, Delete. This is an, an alternative way to look at uh, storing uh, data. Uh, for more detail, tec technical details, um, have a look at the Amsterdam session and the LA core conversation. We're not going to dive very deep into the technical details there because we've been over that before. Um, but we're going to briefly go through it just to make sure that everyone is up to speed here. So basically, what we're looking for here is to enable revisions for all content entity types in core. So things like nodes. Nodes already have revisions, right? But we want to introduce it for terms, uh, block content, users, files, basically every content entity type that we have in core. Um, the create and read aspect of the storage model will be very much the same. We're introducing the archive aspect of it, which is a new revision that we mark as deleted. So what you previously would think about as the delete operation is a new revision that we just archive away. And then we introduce another concept called purge that actually empties uh, the database if, if so needed. Um, obviously, the space will grow having revisions for everything in core. So there's also a, a concept uh, called compaction that will remove old or unnecessary uh, data. Uh, this particular compaction concept is not introduced in the contrib modules yet. We're still working around the details on that. Uh, but that's, in essence, what, what we're talking about here today. Um, revisions for all con content entity types. So why do we need this? Well, without revisions, content can only exist or not exist. You kind of lose this sort of aspect, the content management aspect in, in a CMS or a, a content management framework, if you want, whatever you want to call it. If it's one thing that we should do right as, as a CMS or a CMF, it's content and it's storage model. Um, and we really sort of lose the management, content management part of it if we don't have um, revisions. Uh, revisions obviously improves the user experience. If you make a change, you did the wrong change, you want to roll back, you want to revert. That's not Today that's not possible. You lose your changes if you want to change a block content, for instance. Um, revisions is also the common denominator for many use cases. Uh, workflows, think uh, workbench moderation in Drupal 7. Um, 
synchronous editing uh, for legal reasons. Uh, you might need to provide an audit trail. Uh, there are standards like I, there are ISO standards that require you to pr provide full logs of all the changes. Um, content staging, uh, sharing content across network. Uh, this all requires revisions in order to handle things like conflicts and so on. Um, so it does make sense to have a solid API for this in core to support all of these use cases. Um, traditionally, um, we haven't really implemented things in core without a use case. So we're going to talk about a concrete use case in core as well because we don't just want to introduce this new thing or change everything for no reason in core. We want to have a use case as well. But first, before we cover that, um, just a quick note on the status of this in Contrib. So we're working on this very solution in a module called Multiversion, which enables revisions for all content entity, type, entity types. Uh, it also enables this crap storage way of thinking. Um, so deletes actually is a new revision, a new flagged revision. Um, then we also have the relaxed web services module that extends the REST module in core and exposes this full data model over REST, including with revisions. And it follows a standard API spec that is compatible with other uh, software libraries and projects out there, such as Hoodie or Pouch2D, which opens up a whole other use case that we're not going to cover here today, but that's just an interesting uh, note there. So, how could we make use of this in core? What's, what, what could be a driver to introduce some of these concepts into core? And what we're going to introduce here is it, perhaps one of the oldest concepts of, of computer systems uh, or file and content systems. And in 1984, it looked something like this. It's not the guided tour. We actually have that in Drupal 8 now, 30 years later. But it's a trash bin or a recycle bin. One of the most basic concepts that exists in every desktop computer that you use. It existed since uh, 84 in Mac, as we saw on the other slide. Windows had it since 95. WordPress and Joomla has had it since, I think WordPress had it since 2008. Joomla, I think, was even earlier. It's, it's a concept that people are very, very used to. So this could be a driver for us. Um, we need somewhere to put our crap. Pardon the pun. So I'll hand over, and Tim will introduce the, the trash module and how, how this is relevant to what we're talking about. So the, the trash module uh, is basically just a UI for the multivision because, as, as Dick was saying, we're just flagging content as deleted. So all the trash module does is show that content, allow you to, to see what's in your trash. This works on all uh, content entities, so whether it's a taxonomy term or a block or a node, whatever, you can uh, get them in your trash. And uh, we can then restore uh, content entities, so these get uh, put back exactly as they were with all their revisions. Uh, you can bring back nodes, bring back the comments for nodes. Um, then you can also purge the trash, so completely removing uh, any <coughs> existence of, of the content entity. And um, this, this allows us to, uh, to do this uh, workflow. And, uh, and, and properly stage the content. So I think it's time for a, a quick demo. So it's, uh Great. So here, yeah, just deleted uh, foobar11. Uh, so that was a node. It's now been uh, flagged as deleted. And we can go to the trash and you've got all the different trash bins for the different uh, entity types, and there's a FUBAR 11 uh, in the trash. You 
can then go uh, back to the content. And we've got another node here. And we'll see that this node has got a comment. And we can delete the comment. So we've now got the uh, comment that's moved to the trash. as well that used to have that, that comment. So now we've got all these uh, node entities within the trash, we can go ahead and restore one of those um, and that will bring back the, the node in its entirety. So restore the, the comment that related to that. We'll go back to the, the home page and we, we see the, the nodes back just as it was before. We've got the comment and exactly as it was in the first place. So we're not just doing this on comments and nodes, we're also doing it on taxonomy terms, so we can go into our tag list. And we're able to just delete a node, and delete a, a, a tag. <coughs> and you'll notice when they delete, you don't get any confirmation. We, we don't need that anymore, uh, they're just gone. We remove that step and they just go straight into your trash. So we can now purge items from the trash and this will remove them just like the, the old delete uh, removed them. Um, we give quite a big warning there because of the replication uh, issues. Um, if you have your data replicated on, on another machine and you replicate it back to this one, you may get your deleted, de deleted content back and you may get uh, it, other sort of issues if, if the content has been purged. So there we've just uh, purged a, a <coughs> node as well. So that's uh, the demo on, uh, on the trash module. <coughs> so just uh, looking at then how, how do we get to this, this final goal of, of moving some of this stuff into, into core. And uh, there's a, a great quote here, and uh, what it's talking about is just sort of looking at what we've got at the moment, uh, what we have, sort of taking stock of that and, and moving forward. And we've, we've already got uh, revisions in core at the moment, so we're looking to uh, enable them by default. And if we can do that in, in 8.0, that'd be great. Um, if there's any core committers, then we could do with this, this patch here. Uh, getting committed, and uh, then we'd have revisions on by default. And this this patch enables uh, revisions for the uh, standard uh, article and and page uh, node types that you've already ha have when you when you install a D8 site, and then it also enables it by default when you create a new uh, node type as well. So then uh, moving on to uh, 8.1, we can start looking at adding uh, some of the other items in as well. We can look at improving the uh, performance of revisions and a lot of the stuff in, in multi-version uh, will help move that forward. And we're looking to add revisions to all content entity types. So as you saw in the demo, we've got 
not just nodes that are revisions. We've got all these different content entity types. Uh, we'll need to add a, a revision hash, a parent, and a tree to, to give the full uh, sort of spectrum of the, of the revision. And we can start looking at the, the data migration as well. Um, because the, the existing content that you'd have in your, in your 8.0 site will need to be moved over to this new uh, model. And there's just a note here that, that none of these require API changes. It's all just sort of data changes. Um, so it should be a fairly straightforward process. Uh, and another note here is that the, the revision API that we have in core already supports this perfectly fine. It's, it's, we have a very, very nice generic revision API in core. And we can just enable it for, for additional content entity types. And I think as a content management system, that makes sense um, to have in, in core. Um, so again, to the note down below, it's not really an API change, because uh, these are things that we already have in core, but we're not using. So it's, it's a note there. So moving on to 8.2. Uh, I think the, the top point here is, is a quite a big one, and removing the ability to uh, not have a revision. So every content entity is revisioned um, and you can't turn that off. Uh, it's not optional, just everything is, is revisioned. And then we can start looking at, at putting this uh, delete flag in and making a, a delete a new revision. Uh, we can look at adding purging in because um, obviously you may accidentally create a, a new item of content and you may need to purge it. And then we can look at adding the, the trash module in. And as I said earlier, the, the trash module is very much just a UI um, for all of this stuff. So we're thinking the trash module will stay a, a separate module. And all of the stuff that is now the, the multi-version uh, won't be a, a module in core. It will just be the revision system and will go straight into the entity API. So uh, if you want to summarize. Thanks. Uh, so to quickly summarize what we talked about, uh, what we're looking to do here is not necessarily only to introduce a trash module into core, right? We're doing this fundamentally to improve our content management abilities. Uh, the trash module would just be a driver, an additional feature that sort of would demonstrate part of these abilities to use it as a concrete um, example. Um, by doing so, we're improving uh, user experience. Um, content editors, they do expect to be able to work with revisions. I believe that the trash module can improve some user experience too in terms of you know, the confidence in, in dealing with Drupal. Um, and then with these underlying changes, uh, we do get a common, very solid revision API for all these other use cases that we've discussed, workflows, uh, content staging, content sharing, synchronous editing, um, lots of lots of, uh, of exciting use cases. So that's a quick summary um, what we talked about today, um, and I hope there are great questions or concerns or simply discussion. Thank you. I have a few questions. Um, I, I saw there's a different interface in the administration of trash. There's no multi, I haven't seen any multi-select. Uh, why is it, is it a choice? Is it not finished? Uh, why have a different interface there than the standard content management? So um, to the point, is it not finished? Yes, it's not finished. Um, it's going to be a sort of ever-evolving um, things, and the there is a standard uh, table that we could use in in core, um, but because we're looking at uh, deleted entities rather than proper entities, it's a, a little bit more uh, complex. Um, so when this does go into core, we could possibly look at patching uh, the way these these pages are generated. My my use case would be to purge 
all entities or all content nodes uh, from a certain age, older than a month, whatever, right. uh, manually. Okay. Uh, things like that. Um, yeah. so Currently in, in, in 7, and there is there's nothing like, there's no interface, anything for, for uh, purging uh, old revisions. And from that, from there, there's, there's a, there was a, uh, there's often a request to be able to purge them. Right. And I so haven't seen it yet in the interface. Yeah. So the, the, the trash module itself um, just looks at the entity as a whole, and you can't, uh, at the moment, delete revisions from within a, an entity via the trash module. Um, it just will purge the whole uh, entity. Ah. <laughs> and and, and to, to Tim's earlier point there, look at this as a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's by no means the end all be all. No, that's solution. for me also a, a point, just a point yeah. of discussion. Absolutely. It's, that's, it's that's not, not a hard Very demand, good. and I, don't, <laughs> no, I can't put any money, money on it either. Um, some other questions. Uh, uh, why do you want it in core? Why not live happily ever after in Contrib? Uh, it can definitely live in Contrib. Um, I think that uh, so so trash module would be a driver for uh, you know would be in, serve as an example as we covered. Uh, the revision part of it is needed for so many other things as well. And I really do believe that something like a trash module even, you know, it brings a lot of value, I think, to a content management system. Um, it hasn't really been possible to do it in an efficient way. There, there has been a module for Drupal 5, Drupal 6, uh, Drupal 7, but it's not really worked. And people have sort of given up on it a little bit. Um, but they, they have it in all other content management systems, WordPress, Joomla, there's in desktop, so I think it's generally a good thing for a CMS uh, to have something like, something like this. And then, you know, at the same time, we can cater for all of these other use cases as well. Um, so I think I think it makes sense for to have it in in core for for a product like Drupal. Okay, um, it, it, it's a bit a bit in the same direction. Um, one of the notes was, I think, in phase two, that you want to have. <laughs> That you don't don't want to be able to have revisions. Uh, why have not? Why not have revisions? Isn't that an assumption that uh, everyone has a large site and everyone wants to wants to uh, don't want to delete their content? I think. Um, I, th I think it's, it, it just just similar to everyone uh, needs a menu. You don't. N no, that's not every content type needs a menu. No, I think uh, dealing with with content. Uh, I think there are certain expectations that people expect from, from a content management system. Um, and uh, it's, it, to, that to the user experience part, I think there is an expectation there. And then to, to sort of the underlying pieces, to the APIs, there are great simplifications that we can do to the API if we assume that uh, we do revisions by default always, because uh, at the moment, there's lots of conditional logic for entities without revisions, entities with revisions, entities with multilingual with revisions, entities with multilingual without revisions. We have all of these various different storage models. That is, there's a lot of complex code in our schema handlers and our storage handlers. Could also simplify a lot of logic uh, without necessarily bringing any big performance implications or things like this. So I think I think there are there are certainly some some cons to it. You know, uh, we do build in an assumption, um, but I think it might be worth the the trade off there. Yeah, you and it's you, a definitely you, you know great point of discussion to to carry on. Yeah, because you 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 say it's it's good for user experience, but on the other hand, you're adding more complexity to the interface because there's logic and then there's there's an interface for the revisions, etc. Yeah. So that's it's it a good has point. Both it also a user experience has pros and cons. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, casually, my uh, first remark or question or yeah uh, was related to this part. Actually, uh, I'm not sure I saw it right because it was very quick. But uh, I noticed that when deleting uh, an entity, uh, as you mentioned, there was no confirmation and there was just a message on top, right? Uh, now, I'm seeing very infrequently in the app UIs that 
such um, notification messages often feature a link to revert debt operation. Okay, and I think that could be a, a great UX improvement that would address uh, uh, Tarzan's concerns because it would be uh, very easy to, uh, yeah, very undo good, that. Very good suggestion. Yeah. And yeah, aside from that, um, I was wondering, just uh, from the technical point of view, which kind exact of strategy did you use to replace a confirmation form and actually get rid of them? Okay. So you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I suspect there was something like that going on. <laughs> Okay, so do you do you think we should uh, uh, the horrible hack that's behind that should be a driver for doing something better in core to allow that, or there's no clear solution that would allow to do that in a better way? Um, I, if we look at moving um, the the entity, if we look at putting the entity revisions into core, um, then. I, we, we're not going to need these confirmation messages because you can just restore the, the content and, and the suggestion you made with the, the message is, is a great one. Um, and other than that, I don't see a big driver towards removing the confirmation messages. Um, and yeah, I, don't, I don't think a contrib module, for example, should be able to remove the, these contrib. Uh, uh, okay, so actually, uh, I guess it was uh, a bit more general because I, I guess you somehow overridden uh, the uh, content entity forms. I, uh, I did a, a, a root subscriber to override the root. Okay. Um, and all the forms have a, a similar root name with the entity name in it. So it just looks at the, the entity okay. and, and overrides that. Um, and then just sends it to a new controller. So instead of calling a form, it calls a controller, and the controller does a delete. Okay, uh, fair enough. Um, and, and, and building this into core, obviously, we can streamline that assumption, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And last question. Uh, I guess, sorry, I shouldn't guess. I was wondering whether you took a multilingual uh, into account when, uh, I guess, since the, the this is still work in progress. This was not top priority, right? Right, right. For the trash itself, um, there was no multilingual taken into account. Oh. Uh, but for multiversion? Yeah, yeah multiversion supports revisions exactly the same way that Core does for uh, multilingual entities with revisions. So there's no real change there. So, yeah. so multilingual is supported from that perspective. Um, to your point, um, might be a very good idea to look at, you know, providing perhaps a user interface to to archive or trash translations individually. Yeah, um, yeah. because we uh, we already have a couple of open issues about improving the UX around that area in core. So I was supposing that it wasn't easy that a contrib module still work in progress was already in doing what core what core is not doing actually. Yeah. That's a great so, suggestion. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said something about uh, you that you did compacting to uh, avoid old revisions taking up too much space. What exactly are you doing there? Uh, so, so the concept hasn't been implemented yet. Um, we're still thinking about good ways of doing it. There are several different strategies that you could use. It probably makes sense to do, make that pluggable. Um, there are other systems that have very similar uh, revision storage solutions. They they provide an option that you know compact or remove revisions that's older than you know just keep the ten last revisions essentially. Uh, you could do things like compact or remove every fourth revision that is older than something. Um, however, what's needed here uh, in order to take benefit of this crap storage uh, methodology is actually to keep some trivial metadata still about every revision mm. uh, so that you still have a revision tree so that when revisions come from other sources, either being replicated from a you know, network sharing site or from an editorial staging environment, we can actually see where revisions come from. We have a revision tree and you can, you can do things like conflict detection and so on. So there needs to be some basic metadata still even after the compaction state. So this is still something that, we, that we're solving in the contrib solution. 
Uh, have you considered looking into, you know, more like a Git mo uh, storage model, no, not necessarily using Git, but but the the thing is, you know, that when Git when you make revisions in Git, it actually only stores the changes between the two, whereas Drupal currently stores the full copy of of you know the full text for a, each revision. Uh, the uh, the storage model that we're using is similar to Git in the sense that we're treating so they ha everything has a parent very much like Git, um, and you could actually build uh, revision branches or trees. So that's that's very similar. To your point with um, the the differences, uh, we have thought about it. It would require some quite significant changes to the entity API and how we load and uh, you know content. Um, we took the easy way out this time, uh, okay. you know, but it might be worth considering. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hiya. Uh, so I've, I've got a question about the UI of Trash, and um, it goes back to where we saw that the Trash can has been around for a long time on the desktop. So, but having your trash bins is a bit of a departure from. Uh, one trash can that has everything in it. If I throw out a movie and a folder and a Word document, they all end up in the same trash. Um, I'm going to take a guess that those are built with views. Or no? No. No, no they're not views. Okay. Um, they so, probably will be. Uh, right. Likely, um, but we obviously need to cater for the people that don't have views installed. So that was the, the first step of the non-views version. Right, okay. So I think my question is then, is it going to be possible to have a sort of unified trash bin so that people won't need to know whether something was a node or a block um, when they go and try and find it? The, the issue is that um, there isn't a good way in the entity uh, query to, to query multiple right. entities. Um, multiple entity types, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, we pretty much have to split them out. And the other issue is that each entity is slightly different. Um, so, for example, on a taxonomy term, you don't have a created date. And on a, a node, you do. Um, so, yeah, we need to cater for those kind of use cases as well. Um, but it's, it's something to, to look at and iterate on. Okay, thanks. Thank Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a question uh, regarding the, the revision and the, the revision tree. You, you said today they can come from uh, different places, but they could also come from like a, a workflow on the same site. So like different people um, having making different revisions with the same parent. Um, what about merging um, these uh, revisions back together or um, like say someone edits the title and someone edits the, the tag and then you want to have both of them and not select one that wins, let's yeah. say. Uh, so merging is a very, very complex topic. Of course. Uh, so, so what we've done at the moment is that we have the ability to detect where you have conflicts mm -hmm. um, and we, we are looking at ways to make a merge or conflict resolution API pluggable so that you could you know, pick and choose different merging strategy because every company, every site, every organization is gonna want to have it different. Um, uh, so you know, providing a pluggability there is probably a good idea. Um, you could then write a plugin that uses the git merge algorithm. Um, you could use a lot simpler merging algorithms too. Uh, I don't think that there's one solution there, uh, but certainly making it pluggable, and it's certainly something that needs to make it in uh, to the to the module. Certainly in Contrib, perhaps not in Core, but yeah, yeah. I mean the the pluggability is, is of course a very good solution, yeah. but like the first step to be even able to do that is to have like several parents. Like the, you you have like the revision parent, but yeah. you need to also have several to like graph the tree then, because if you if you merge two revisions, then you need to know that you did that. Otherwise, you have a new one and you base it off either one and then, you know. Yeah, so so in I think a merge should always be a new revision. Of course, of yeah. course. Uh, very much like uh, Git does it. Mm -hmm. And and that's certainly supported. Um, 
so, it, so you can have a revision with several parents? A, a revision can have, so y your, your merge uh, fix yeah. would be a child of, of a parent, and that parent will have, that parent will have multiple childs, right? Some, some of them being conflicts, yeah. and another one being the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure you need multiple parents, um, because a parent will have multiple children instead. I think that's that's what needed. I'm not sure I follow your no because if you, if you have uh, several parents and then you if if do you only uh, branch the trees, mm. and then the the way you select the version that's like the the one that wins, you you go along this tree and then you say I okay see. this one is the newest and this one like follows the other newest. I see. And so if you make a, a like a new revision on in one of the branches. And then the other revision can still like win, or you know you 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 need to be able to resolve the yeah. the tree in 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 the same way Git basically does when when you make a merge commit that has several other parent commits. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's or, it, it's it's a good point. Um, I think. Yeah, let's let's sit down and discuss it. Okay, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not uh, familiar enough with the, like all the technical. Yeah, I. I it, so. it, it, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, merging and conflict resolution is <laughs> yeah, a, a tough very problem, compl <laughs> complex top, uh, topic. So I think it definitely needs more thought. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's you know great points they're bringing up. So so let's discuss it for sure. Yeah. Thanks. So, are there any considerations to have around uh, references, like entity reference, when you delete, say you delete a node that has references, or the other way around, you delete a reference, or when you purge a reference? What is there anything special that you have to think about here in in your particular use case, or does it work the same? Uh, so we haven't changed anything of how it currently works in Core uh, in that aspect. So uh, I don't believe Core cleans up uh, if there's a reference to a deleted entity. Uh, core doesn't do any cleaning up there, and we have not changed that. Um, uh, we have not had to change that either. Uh, well, at least we haven't run into a use case yet. There might be some, and then we definitely need to tackle it. Um, uh, probably what's needed, uh, just as a related thing here, probably what's needed along with a more elaborate revision API is also the, having the ability to reference certain revisions. Because uh, at the moment, you only, when you put in an entity reference, you're only referencing the default revision to an yeah. entity. Yeah. We probably need support to reference certain revisions. Or group, um, group entities yeah. into, into a same revision. If you make, like a field collections, for example, is a good use case, or paragraphs, um, where an, if you make a change to a node, you probably want to keep the revision of that reference together because you were looking at it in the same form. Yeah. Uh, um, so that in particular is not something that we've looked at yet. Um, I do think, you know, we definitely need to think harder about how we do revisions because when, when we're more elaborate with this, these use cases are exactly going to come up. So we need solutions for them for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know, I think that there are work in Contrib uh, to, to look at this. I think, Andre, you've been working on uh, references to revisions. Is that true? Or do, am I getting that wrong? Okay. Okay. So there, there is work in country to to start exploring these things. I think it needs more exploration for sure. Mm. Okay. Yep. Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you support en uh, contrib entities out of the box, or um, did do have uh, the contrib modules need to do something, or uh, how is that done? You were talking about core entities, but if you're looking at commerce for co commerce and audit trail on order can be really uh, uh, good, but does it uh, come out of the box or should it be in commerce or should it be in your module? So the way that it currently works is that we iterate over all entity uh, content entity types and we enable revisions for it. So this would include even uh, contrib entity types. Um, it works great in core. Um, the, uh, the entity API and the revision API has perfect support for switching around the storage handlers um, uh, we, we multiversion needs to provide the sort of migration part of it, uh, the data migration. So we still need to explore how this actually will work with Contrib. 
uh, we need to do more testing there and perhaps have test cases in, in the contrib uh, multiversion module where we actually test this uh, properly. Um, because, yeah, it's a little bit unknown how, you know, the, the quality of contrib, uh, how that will work and what the impact will be if there are built-in assumptions that there shouldn't be relations for some reason. You know, that could certainly be problematic. Um, so, you know, as Drupal 8 adoption grows, I think that we, we need to explore this and we need to learn this as we go. And other question was, uh, how about uh, the security? Normally, uh, something is deleted. You know for sure it doesn't show up on the website. Uh, how you make sure a deleted content is not shown to a user? Uh. So it's actually quite trivial to uh, to make sure that a archived or or deleted entity is not loaded, uh, because what we do is that we change the storage handler, and the storage handler has has a full power of you know how entities are loaded or shown. Um, so at the moment, all core tests actually pass uh, with this. Um, uh, with these changes uh, made, so we don't see any security concerns at the moment. Okay. Um, there are, however, security concerns um, in regards to how 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 you use uh, the 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 functionality, right? So, um, deleting or purging an an entity in one environment, if you purge completely, remove it from from uh, your site, let's say um, stage one, let's say that you have multiple stage environments, editorial stage environment, if you purge an entity from stage one, that deletion will not be propagated, right? So if you have, you know, uh, legal issues with something or security issues with Node, you need to actually make sure that you only delete it or archive it so that that can propagate through your environments, because if you purge it, that will not propagate, you know, if, if you do a replication. So it, we need there's some education, so to speak, to to be done to users that use this in a in a multi environment situation, um, where th this is one of the use cases where it actually will be used for. So, you know, we need to take that in con consideration. Thank you. Yeah. More questions. What do you see as like the risks and the challenges of getting this on the core? Like, uh, obviously, there's a pretty obvious use case. Yeah. So to repeat. Yeah, so to repeat the, the question, uh, uh, what do you see as the risks and the challenges to, to get this into core? Um, obviously getting the challenge to start with that is obviously to get people's buy-in, that you know revisions is something that we need as a content management system. Um, and, and that's going to be a big challenge. Um, even turning on revisions for nodes by default have spurred quite a big uh, tree of discussions. So that's going to be a big challenge. Uh, you know, getting uh, people to, to align around this. Um, risks. Um, obviously, we, we don't want to build in assumptions, uh, too many assumptions into core. Uh, there's a risk there that we build in too many assumptions, for sure. There was a question early on raised around that. That's definitely a risk. It might turn out to be the wrong assumptions uh, down the line. So that's definitely a risk. And, and this is something that we need to iterate on and discuss and make sure that, you know, we do take the right decisions. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but uh, that's my take on it, I think. Hi, guys. Um, looks brilliant. Uh, just yes. in terms of the naming being used, because as a content strategist, I'll write a blog post later on and say Drupal 8 is full of crap. And that's going to be nice and funny. It gets tweets. As a business development officer, next week I'm going to write a, a tender proposal for a government contract, and I don't want to say Drupal is full of crap. So, what's the what's the nice name? Let's say for like, what, are, are we are we talking trash? Are we talking crap? Are we talking multiversion? What's the what's the business name? Let's I, say. I think when when and congratulations, it was, yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, a very good point, and and uh, you know, a valid concern for sure. Uh, I think that when when it makes into core, um, there won't be it will be an elaborate revision API. So, uh, you know, I think that perhaps we should talk about it as a, a more elaborate, a more fully featured revision API, simply. Um, I think that the trash terminology exists almost everywhere. It exists in, you know, your desktop computers. Sure, Windows names it a recycle bin. Um, perhaps, what? In Europe, it's trash in America. Oh, really? Okay. Um, 
and, and uh, both WordPress and Joomla uses the trash name for the trash bin. Um, uh, I think, to your point, crap is probably something, you know, we should just call it revision, a, you know, an elaborate revision API <laughs> uh, once it gets into core. Um, you know, yeah. So uh, a question about uh, the, the complete purging of entities you were mentioning earlier. So if I understood it right, uh, a full purge will be propagated through systems, right? A, a purge will not be propagated because then the entity is gone and there's nothing that you can propagate. So a, a delete or what we should call an archive perhaps, that will be able to propagate because that's just a new revision that you propagate through your editorial environments or your staging environments or your multiple production environments, wh what it might be. Okay, so my question was, was this a, a technical limitation that you hit or was it um, made on purpose? I, I'd say it's, it's, it's definitely made on purpose. Okay. Uh, there, there are definitely use cases for, for purging, uh, you know, if, if, let's say in your, if you play around in the staging environment and you, you, know, you do some hello world testing things, you, know, you do want to purge that, you do want that to be gone forever, because it's just testing. Um, so it's, it's a uh, conscious decision. Okay, because I, I was wondering, you can always, uh, to uh, take your example, you can always not migrate uh, a deletion for a, an entity, a test entity that is not available in the production environment, but what I was wondering, would it make sense to have a final delete, purged revision that once propagated fully deletes the entity in the other environment and maybe deletes the entity also in the environment made, being migrated? I, I think that's a very good point and it would address some of the uh, security implications of if you have something that needs to be taken away for security reasons or something like this, you, need, you want to have a way to being able to securely purge across your whole network or your whole array of staging environments, for instance. So that, that's a very good feature. Whether it lives in core or on contrib, not sure. Uh, but it's a very good point, actually. And probably something, yeah? So I think the sole uh, problem is that uh, environments might not uh, know about each other, because if they do, you can just split the uh, REST API. Mm. Yeah, so, so the way that we have it uh, at the moment is that the replication process is a separate Drush command. So you would need to set up your business logic or you know, do your replication how you choose. The, the environments by default, they actually don't know about each other. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could automatically sort of propagate. Yeah, and that, that is a problem indeed. Another question? Yeah, uh, it's a question. Uh, something occurred to me when we talked about the entity references early in the earlier question. And so I'm going to ask, is it possible or do you envisage having um, a way to customize or, or respect constraints that are in the content model? So let's say uh, you've got some kind of reference. It could be a you know, node references a, a user or something like that, but you have a mandatory required entity reference and then somebody comes along and tries to delete something which is required. It's you know, kind of a dependency in your content model. Um, would, you, would you say, no, that can't be deleted because some other entity has it as a mandatory reference or would you permit that and then uh, sort of make it of what would happen to the, the entity which, which has now lost its, its mandatory? Uh, reference, uh, would it, how would it be indicated there? Uh, any thoughts on that? It's, I, I think it depends hugely on, on you know, s specific circumstances around, uh, around the use case. Um, uh, it's certainly possible to, to implement those types of restrictions. Um, uh, there are mul multiple entry points where you could go in and alter and do that. Uh, whether it belongs in core or not, uh, not sure. Um, my thoughts of, of it in general um, sounds like something useful. I can see that you know you have the situation where you do have dependencies, and you know you want to sort of implement those constraints. Um, I, I think I'd need to discuss it in more detail to understand exactly why uh, or how. 
things would work around it uh, to answer that question fully, I guess. Okay, thanks. So I, I was kind of related was would you see this as being part of the revision API or would it be farmed out to another system like rules or? It, it, it sounds like a quite specific use case. So I would probably say they would be farmed out to some sort of contrib module. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I, I wouldn't, and I work with Andrew, so I'll back him up. <laughs> I, I wouldn't consider it a very specific use case because I think every one of us has a website that says, here's our clients, and every client has a reference, here's a portfolio piece I've, I've, I've done from mm -hmm. that. And that's probably 100% of the people in, in the room. And I, I think it's, it's, it's a use case that certainly will need to be solved probably yeah. sooner rather than later. Yeah, that's... What is, what is a <laughs> what? No, that's a question, more question back to you. What would be the, the Drupal 7 solution? What, what's the current solution? Uh, and, and can we still use that maybe simpler solution in 8.2? Uh, <laughs> it's like tennis. <laughs> There's no Drupal 7 solution. If, 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 if I delete a portfolio page and I got a client page and the client has to have, or every portfolio must have a client attached to it because we, we, we built that that website for some client. Uh, it allows me to delete the client or the portfolio and nothing breaks, but it just means my content model isn't satisfied. Yeah. But it's, 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 it still works. It's, it's, it's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, bringing up that concrete use case, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. And that, 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 there are definitely ways, ways to implement that. And I think it's a discussion point that we should have as a community to say, you know, as part of this phase to get these pieces into core, you know, what, what are the exact scopes that we should, that we should be tackling? Um, yeah, I think it requires more discussion, I think. But it's, it's very concrete and good use case there, actually. Hmm. Another question? Just one. Yeah. A lot of your challenges seem to, for the future, seem to have to do with content entities that reference ref versions of other content entities, and if we delete this, why it references that, what happens, and all that kind of stuff. Have you looked at seeing if the content entity reference module could be expanded to handle a lot of these use cases? Because that's really what it's built for, except it doesn't handle versions yet. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with the It's uh, with simple. The it says that you have an entity reference from content A to content B. And whenever you change something, content A, B has to be updated, and vice versa. Okay. It helps you manage those relationships. I see. And if it was expanded to handle your versions of content, yeah. it sounds like it would help a lot with a lot of these use cases. Yeah, it's, if these things, um, or I would say regardless of these things get into core or not, if they live in contrib, um, either way, I think that would be good additions to that particular module um, to make use of the full spectrum of functionality in the revision API. It's a good point. We should take note of that and make sure that that happens. Okay, we, we're slowly running out of time, actually. Uh, thanks for all your great questions, and uh, enjoy DrupalCon. <laughs>